welcome to Jax London. I'm here with Brian Bellendorf, the executive director of the Hyperledger project. Hi, Brian. Hi, nice to meet you. How was the keynote? It was fun. You know, a half hour in front of a very technical audience. You know, way, way too often I'm giving speeches to business audiences or healthcare audiences. I mean, all these different sectors that blockchain technology is applicable to. Um, people still need to understand the use cases. They understand what this thing is, right? And they hear a lot of hype and a lot of make money fast uh, kinds of messages. And so it's great to be able to talk to devs and try to get at the heart of what this technology is really about. Uh, and then tell them what we're doing, uh, especially through open source software to try to make that accessible. You know, I like to say we try to make it boring, right? Um, and make it feel like the plumbing under in the house. Uh, you also talked about the importance of open source and collaboration in tech. They yeah. are crucial after all. Uh, so people obviously know what open source is, but how about open governance? What is it and what does Hyperledger do to educate people about open governance? And you mean the governance of the projects yeah. themselves? Yeah. So uh, I think technologies are built not by individuals, but by communities, right? Occasionally you have a company that puts forward something, um, but most often it's built by lots of pe right people working in concert, right? And in the old days, it used to be you had to hire them all into your business to do something. You know, that's why Bell Labs, you know, or these you know, famous big companies, or IBM or whoever, had these giant research teams. But from about the time that the Internet kind of arrived, we've been able to figure out how do we build these complex systems using people in very far-flung locations, right? And using uh, help from people who didn't, you know, want to be full-time builders of plumbing, but wanted to build something on top. And what open source allows us to do is figure out how to work enough here to make our lives easier so we can actually go all, uh, out and build something up there, right? Um, and that's the story of Linux. That's the story of Apache, right? This is now 20 years in. There are patterns to how to build a really healthy open source community. And so with Hyperledger as part of the Linux Foundation, we're, that's our number one focus, you know? The technology is interesting and, and innovative. We want to learn and incorporate lots of new ideas, but at its heart, it's about getting devs to, have, uh, to be able to work together and build these projects into multi-developer, multi-stakeholder, multi-vendor kinds of projects. And what's next for Hyperliter? I mean, what is the next milestone for this year, for example? Yeah, well, um, I mean, this year we've done a lot of important things. We've added some additional projects that touch on the Ethereum community uh, and technology stack that touch on identity. Um, uh, we hit a 1.0 release of Fabric, uh, which is kind of our one of our core platforms. Um, and, uh, and really, this is a train where, you know, there's stops on that track, which are 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 releases of Fabric. So that'll be important to, keep see, to, to see continue. Uh, Sawtooth will likely hit a 1.0 before the end of the year as well. Um, and other technologies like Hyperledger Indie are already being used in production. And so we expect to see that also get to a release. Um, otherwise, it's just really growing the community. You know, it's adding, getting more developers, getting more companies involved. We have now over 160 different organizations who are paying members of Hyperledger, like actually committed, and lots more who use the technology beyond. Um, that, uh, um, you know, so growing that is interesting to us because that helps establish the, we want to become the default. We want to, if you want to build a decentralized environment, decentralized infrastructure in cooperation with a bunch of others, we want the first thing you think of to do is pull some technologies down from Hyperledger. So I guess I also say one of the other things we need to do is make these technologies easier to install, easier to use, easier to climb the learning curve with. So we're doing all that. Um, so Oracle just launched Oracle Blockchain uh, Cloud Service. Yeah. And um, it uses um, Fabric as a starting point, right? Mm -hmm. So could you perhaps tell us more about Fabric and what is its end game? Right, so you could think of Fabric kind of like an Apache web server. It's a piece of software that sits on a box, a server or an instance in the cloud, whatever, um, that uh, is your uh, homestead on the, the distributed ledger, right? Uh, and so in a distributed ledger, it's you, it's 20 or 100 other participating organizations who all agree to have this common ledger. But each of you needs to run a node, right? And your entire trust in that system is that you're running a node that's keeping a copy of all the transactions flowing across the network, right? Um, and that's why you can trust this, this record, because you have that copy. Um, and so any company that wants to engage meaningfully in a distributed ledger setting will be standing up these nodes, right? And companies like Oracle uh, and IBM and others, but, but um, basically I think every cloud company is going to be offering this blockchain as a service or ledger as a service type of thing, um, uh, not only to make it easier for companies to, to have that connection and, and stand it up, but also because the more diverse your ledger, the more participants there are, 
it's kind of like having more witnesses to a contract, right? Like uh, it, it increases the verifiability, the trustworthiness of, of those transactions. So I see, you know, potentially networks that have a node on Oracle's cloud and IBM's cloud and Amazon's cloud and others um, all working in concert to provide some value. Um, well, blockchain is everywhere apparently, but still it's not the easiest technology and that might be one of the reasons why not so many people are actually eager to experiment or to actually cultivate this skill. So should we or how should we make blockchain more digestible, for example? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, this is like the early days of the internet where, um, you know, there were, there were lots of different protocols, lots of different languages, and it took something like the Apache web server uh, and the Mosaic browser to make this understandable for people and make it easy to see how these pieces fit together. And so um, in Hyperledger, hopefully, you know, each of the projects will become easier to install. But um, we also added a project called Composer, which is a development environment for building blockchain business networks. Think of it that way. So it allows you to pretty high level, almost at a business user level, to define what you want to do. You know, the types of actors on that chain, the types of business processes. And then it spits out uh, smart contract code for you, right? Um, and makes it easy to move from not knowing anything to being able to have a running system. So we've done these hackathons recently, which um, have been around, you know, some challenge, you know, like, like find a social impact application, right? Um, and uh, uh, we've been able to take developers who are curious about this and want to learn more. They, maybe they're familiar or comfortable on the command line, but not really like, like hacker types, uh, but uh, are able to, over the course of, you know, starting on Saturday morning by Sunday midday, having a demo, to show that illustrates a, a whole set of ideas, right? Um, uh, and that's, that feels great, you know? And, and I think today we're at the point where even within your first hour of exploring how to use different Hyperledger technologies, you can have a running four node instance uh, that, that you can start writing chain code against and understanding how these systems work. Um, and well, this is one of the questions that I've heard many times recently. Will or should blockchain eliminate the middleman and how? Yeah. Um, well, did the internet eliminate the middlemen? It turned out there were a lot of middlemen. I mean, things like um, the, the yellow pages, right, that probably deserve to kind of go away. But in some ways, they just transform, right? Um, the, the yellow pages became the map, right? You know, today, when I want to know where to eat around town, I look at Google Maps, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think it'll transform a lot of middlemen. It'll certainly cut a lot of margin out of being a middleman and, um, because... It'll make uh, the right kind of middleman would be somebody who'll be more like a referee on a football field than a, me a message passing hub, right? Um, and you know there'll be rules, there'll be there'll be um, ways the businesses talk directly to each other. But those businesses want a governance mechanism. They want to understand how do we evolve as a community, what the what what the acceptable business processes are, what the uh, how the community works, and what happens if there's a bug that causes a bad actor to steal. From others, right? We will need um, organizations that help us um, uh, uh, correct for those kinds of things, even in a distributed ledger. But the more we can automate, the more governance that we can actually embed as software in smart contracts and in the validation logic on the ledger itself, the, the more that we can keep fraud from happening in the first place, the more we can make business processes fair and auditable and accountable. Um, and I think that ends up being the best of both worlds. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, yeah. Last but not least, what advice would you give to developers um, who want to get started with blockchain? Yeah, uh, read, read a lot. Uh, uh, there is this hump that people get to in understanding this is not just, a, this is not a data analytics tool or a big data tool. This is, this is a special kind of thing. And, um, you know, we're also used to like sit down, write an app and, and deploy it and never having to really ask permission or if we do, just one boss. And these things are community technologies, right? There's no such thing as a blockchain of one. So one of the hardest bits for any company to think about, and I think this means for developers, is when you're coming up with your idea, talk to other people, even other people at other companies. What, are, what can we build that would help all of us at the same time? Uh, and, um, and then once you have that use case crystal clear, uh, uh, or even just in sight, you know, uh, building, building an, a, a demo of that or a proof of concept like that becomes a lot easier. That's great. Thank you very much, sure. and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.